Exercise 15.21 is asking you to propose a molecular formula for a compound, and all they're really giving you are the masses and the relative heights for two peaks, the molecular ion peak and the m plus 1 peak. So we've gone through the reasoning for how to solve this in the previous problem, and we went through the whole concept of mass spectrometry in uh, the previous, in two, the video, two videos ago. So let's just go through a streamlined problem-solving method for the rest of this uh, exercise. So we're going to use this formula first. They give us the m plus 1 peak, the relative height of that, 4.3. That is what we put at the top of this fraction. So if we've got this whole fraction, we know at the top there we're going to have 4.3. And then, at the bottom of that fraction, we'll have the molecular ion peak, the percentage height of that. And so that's 100 here. So really, this is just giving us 4.3 divided by 1.1. And so the number of carbons that we have is around 4. All right, so four carbons. Well, let's use that information. We know that the overall mass of the molecule is the same as the mass for the molecular ion, so it should be 68. So we need 68 AMU total. We just found that we have four carbons. So we know we'll have carbon in the molecule. We have four of those. Each carbon brings 12 AMU to the table. So we will get 48 AMU coming from the carbons. Now, it would be nice if, if possible, fill in the rest of the mass with hydrogen. Here's the only catch. The maximum number of hydrogens you could have, as we saw in the last problem, was 2 times the number of carbons plus 2. So the maximum number of carbons we could have, of hydrogens we could have here is 2 times 4 plus 2, or 10. And if we added 10 hydrogens, each hydrogen weighs one, brings 1 AMU, so that would only bring 10 AMU, and the total for the compound would only be 58 AMU, but we need 68. So there must be another element in this compound besides carbon and hydrogen. So we'll wait to deal with the hydrogens, and we'll put in this other element. Now here we're kind of speculating. Um, the two most common elements are in organic chemistry are nitrogen and oxygen. And so we're going to try to propose a molecular formula that would have one of those. We can always check to see if those are in a molecule using a different type of analysis, like IR spectroscopy. Um, but for now, we're just proposing a plausible molecular formula. So maybe nitrogen. Is that in the molecule? Remember from the previous video, if you have an odd number of nitrogens, it would make the molar mass odd. We have an even number of nitrogens. I'm sorry, we have an even molar mass. You might say, well, what if we add an even number of nitrogens? Well, then you'd be adding 28 AMU, and you would get a mass that would be 78, or 76. And that's bigger than what we need. In other words, we can't have hydrogen. If you add one hydrogen, then the, the mass of the molecule would be odd, whereas we know it's even. 68 is an even number. And if you add two nitrogens, then you get a mass that's too big. So nitrogen is not in this molecule. How about oxygen? That's the other most common element in organic chemistry. If we add one oxygen, then that would bring 16 AMU to the table. So, so far, we would have a total of 48 plus 16, so that's 64. 64 AMU. 
So we need a total of 68, and so we would just fill in the rest of the mass with hydrogens. So you put four hydrogens, each hydrogen brings one AMU, so that's a total of four AMU. And the total, if you add all of those together, you'd have 48 plus 16 plus four, and that's 68 AMU. So a plausible molecular formula for this compound would be C4OH4. We have four carbons, C4. We have one oxygen, O. And then we have four hydrogens, so H4. All right, let's go through that same process for a couple more. First for C. So we know we can get the number of carbons using this formula that we derived in the previous video. Um, and so I'll just draw out the general structure for the formula and we can fill it in. Okay, so the M plus one peak, they gave us a height for that, it's 4.6. So that's what we'll plug in for that M plus one peak there. That's the percentage height that we're getting. So 4.6. The relative height of the molecular ion peak, they give us as 100%, so that's what we'll plug in here. So 100%. And so this is giving us 4.6 divided by 1.1, that's around 4. So we have about 4 carbons. Each carbon is bringing 12 AMU, and so we'll have around 48 AMU coming from the carbons. The mass of the whole compound is the same as the Mz ratio, the mass to charge ratio, of the molecular ion peak, which we know is 54, so that there are 54 AMU total. Now if you can, fill in the rest with hydrogens. The maximum number of hydrogens that this molecule can have, as we also saw and derived in the last video, is 2 times the number of carbons plus 2. So 2, we have 4 carbons plus 2, that's 10 hydrogens. We have maximum 10 hydrogens. Can we get to 54 AMU by adding just hydrogens? We can, because we only need six hydrogens in order to get to 54 AMU. And we're allowed to use 10 max, so six is fine. So six, each hydrogen brings one AMU, a total of six AMU coming from the hydrogens, and you get a total of 54 AMU from the molecule. So a plausible molecular formula for this compound would be C4H6, because we have four carbons and six hydrogens. All right, one more. So here we are. So first, we're going to use this formula that we derived before um, in, a, in a, the previous video to find the number of carbons. The number, uh, the percentage for the M plus one peak is 1.5. So that's what we're going to plug in on the top there. The percentage for the molecular ion peak is 19. So that's what we'll plug in on the bottom there. Notice we're not plugging these masses in here. These are the percents. And so the number of carbons will be 1.5 divided by 19 times 100 times 100. That's, that should give you something like 7.89. So 
7.89, and then divide that by the 1.1, divided by 1.1, and you get around 7. Now technically it's 7.1 or 7.17, but you round down, so we've got basically 7 carbons. All right. Well, the total mass of the molecule is the m to z ratio for the molecular ion peak, as we talked about in the first video on mass spectrometry. So we need a total mass of 96 AMU. Now we know that we have seven carbons. So we know we have carbon, we have seven of them, each one weighs around 12. So we'd have a total of seven times 12, or 84 AMU, coming from the carbons. And so the question is, can we fill in the rest with hydrogens? Because if we can, that's what we should do. What's the maximum number of hydrogens we could have? The maximum number of hydrogens we could have is twice the number of carbons plus two. Well, we have seven carbons, so the maximum number of hydrogens would be 14 plus 2, or 16. Can we get from 84 to 96 by adding 16? And we can. So we'll just add the number of hydrogens we need, and that would be 12. So we need 12 hydrogens. Each hydrogen weighs 1 AMU, so that's 12 AMU. And you add those together, you get a total of 96 AMU. So a plausible molecular formula for this would be carbon C7H12, because we have seven carbons and 12 hydrogens to give us the right mass. So that's a sort of procedure for how you can, uh, how you can work through, you can use a, a mass spectrum to come up with a really plausible uh, molecular formula. You can get the exact number of carbons, and then you can get a plausible amount for the other elements in them. And you can double check your molecular formula with other techniques we've learned, like IR spectroscopy.